Glory Las Plagas everyone, and welcome to a Resident Evil 4 Remake Weapons Tier List. I recently put myself through the grueling task of giving myself infinite ammo and then pointing my gun at Spaniards for 120 hours straight. I did all this to find out which Resident Evil 4 Remake weapon truly slapped. Which pistol was the real mom spaghetti? Which mass murder kill kill weapon would fire off those little monkey neurons in my brain? And the TMP was not one of them. Actually, let's get all the meme tier weapons out of the way for the sake of time, and I'll explain why in a bit, but first, RAID- I'm kidding. The TMP sucks donkey butt because of its mediocre firepower and massive weapon bloom. It's massive, bruv. Fucking massive. Even with the stock upgrade, the TMP remains unpredictable at best, and the firepower does not mean anything if you can't hit your enemy. Bullets that hit the wall do exactly zero damage. And if I have to mag dump to kill an entire single regular enemy, it's not a good weapon. It's meme tier. And meme tier does not mean F tier, okay? There are no F tier weapons in this game, luckily. Capcom did a fine job on the balance of all the weapons in this game. Each has their place in your attaché case. An F tier weapon means that it's actually detrimental to have in your playthrough. And luckily, I don't think there are any weapons like that. On a more positive note, we have the TMP's cooler little cousin, the Matilda, which gets an A. You first unlock the Matilda in the castle section of this game. But you don't unlock the Matilda's true potential until chapter 11, when you get the stock. When you get the stock, it turns the Matilda into a rapid fire beast. Its 3 round burst capabilities elevates this pistol into a different class. Look at that! Look at this fucking Matilda! Look at that shit, man! The Matilda gets an A because it's basically the better TMP. It has smaller spread, less recoil, more damage per bullet, and handgun ammo drops in abundance in this game. Using the Matilda will save you on space from both the TMP, plus its stock, and its submachine gun ammo. Fully upgraded, the Matilda will be your main squeeze for many New Game Plus playthroughs. Okay, let's do a bad one again. The bolt thrower. Okay, the bolt thrower. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, yes, yes, you can do cute little tricks with the attachable mines, but is this weapon actually gonna clutch anything out? No, no, it's not. It's not. It's it's shit. It's shit. The the bloom is so unnecessary. Theoretically, this should be a more accurate weapon. Just I don't. What, what, your knife does more damage. Your knife does more damage. Just use your knife, and, and it takes up so much space. And I don't care if it technically has infinite ammo, quote unquote. I, when I have to use my bolts to kill one enemy, like all of them, to kill one single enemy, it's meme tier. Meme tier weapon. Oh, S tier. S tier. Get both of her guys. It does no damage. So next up, we got the SG-09R, Leon's custom handgun. It gets an honorary B tier. The firepower of this weapon really leaves something to be desired. The SG at its base stats is a wet noodle of a gun. Fully upgraded, it's like an uncooked noodle. It's fine though, because you don't really use pistols to kill anything in this game. It's mainly used to stun enemies or interact with the environment. The SG serves its purpose. It's like the Ryu of handguns. It's the handgun that all other handguns will be compared to. It would have been a C-tier weapon if not for the laser sight upgrade, which gets rid of one of the biggest headaches in this game, which is Weapon Bloom. The exclusive upgrade is cute, with the ability to pop heads 5 times more often, until your buzz is killed by a head popper. This gun is also the cheapest to take to full power, that's something to keep in mind. And it is the only weapon you get for free aside from the combat knife. Next up, we got the Sentinel-9. Now, I didn't buy this DLC. This is a DLC weapon, so I don't know how it works, but I've heard good things about it. It's basically a slightly better SG-09, boasting faster fire rate, faster reload, and higher ammo capacity. But I wouldn't get up out of the chair for this weapon. It's still a semi-automatic pistol at the end of the day. B tier. The Red-9. Okay, I know I'm going to piss some people off, by saying this, but it's a C-tier weapon. It's a straight up C-tier weapon. I sell it in almost every single playthrough. Like I said before, you don't really kill things in this game with pistols, rendering the massive 2.7 firepower null in most cases. Another thing holding this weapon back is, ha ha ha, you guessed it, the weapon bloom. Once again, it's massive, bruv. It's massive. You don't know how many times I've needed this weapon to clutch out. And it just didn't. It just didn't. 
Man, fuck, you might accidentally shoot Ashley with it, the weapon from that fat bitch. The reload time and fire rate is gonna get you killed. On professional difficulty, the enemies sprint at you at Mach 5, like they have a freaking bomb up their ass. Leaving your headshots up to RNG is just not efficient. The Red 9 is a classic case of big number does not equal big output, especially since pistols are more of a utility tool. Yes, the damage slaps with the 5x power exclusive upgrade. Yes, the reticle closes faster when you have the stock, but trust me, there are better guns. All right, now the SRM 1904, the bolt action sniper rifle, our first S tier weapon. Now this is your boss killer. This is the big dick damage. This is the El Grande Pipi in the culo, okay? You get this very early on in chapter two and you should buy it and upgrade it. This is your sweet summer baby. It's accurate, it's hit scan. You point it at a Ganado's head and click, boom, threat removed. Fully upgraded, there's nothing that this thing can't burst down. The real secret sauce of this gun is the 3x multiplier to weak points, which is just free damage because you are always trying to hit weak points in this game. The caveat of this weapon is its bolt action design, meaning that you have to come out of scoping in order to load the next round into the chamber. It can definitely be distracting, but its precision and killing power more than make up for it. An S tier weapon is a weapon that punches above its weight. The bolt action is the cheapest to upgrade out of all of the rifle based weapons, and it's easy on the inventory space and you get it very early on. And most likely, you will have this weapon strapped to your back into the very last chapters of this game. S tier. Okay, we had a good one, now we should do a bad run. I like to keep you guys on an emotional roller coaster. The Punisher. Uh, it's it's C tier. It's C tier. It's a super male weapon. Super male weapon. Fully upgraded, it feels like a leaner SG-09. It has higher fire rate and ammo capacity, but you lack the killing power of a lucky critical hit. Its special effect is penetration power, but that's such a niche situation, and you probably want to use the rifle for that niche anyways. The rifle at least kills another person behind your target, if you land a double headshot. A handgun shot will just piss him off. Consistently luring enemies into choke points is not always a viable option, so its exclusive upgrade of penetrating up to 5 targets is not impressing me all that much either. You should probably leave the Punisher with the Merchant, in my opinion. To me, the Punisher is the worst handgun in the game. The laser sight does not save this weapon from C tier. We got the Riot Gun. This gun is a fucking riot, alright? It's a great weapon. A tier, just mmm, just chef, just mmm, mm, fucking chef's kiss, the, the fire rate. What's so great about the riot gun is that it does its job at level 1. That's right, it's base stats, no lubricant needed. Shotguns are not killing tools. They can be used as killing tools, but they are mainly used as a get the fuck out of my way tool. Shotguns are valued for their knockdown and stagger power, and the riot gun has them in spades. Actually, we can talk about all the shotguns. The riot gun is a straight up upgrade from the W870. There is no reason to keep the pump action shotgun the moment you unlock the riot gun in chapter 6. The W870, even with the exclusive upgrade, is not worth the mediocre fire rate and spread. D tier. <gasps> the striker holds the same value as the riot gun. It's an A tier weapon. It's more expensive to upgrade than the riot gun, and its spread is mucho fucking grande, but it fulfills the same purpose as the riot gun. Crowd control. Basically, if you want more mid-range control, go for the riot gun, and if you like more close-range control, go for the striker. So the skull shaker, the skull shaker, uh, okay, so the moment I tried out this weapon, I knew why Capcom charged extra money for it. It's an S tier weapon, easily. The Skull Shaker truly earns its namesake with good firepower, spread, and fire rate. And it's not the best shotgun in any of these categories, but its reload animation pretty much cements its place in S tier. Okay, oh. Okay, the LE5. Oh god, the LE5. This weapon shares many of the same problems I have with the TMP. The blazing fire rate does not make up for the low damage. I need my weapons to do two things in this game. Okay, I need it to kill something or I need to move something out of my way. The submachine gun class of weapons do not do either of these very well, unfortunately. Since you need to mag dump to kill enemies, you will always be low on ammo, and therefore opening yourself up to getting more shitty submachine gun ammo via RNG drops and clogging up more inventory space. Also, it's massive, bro. It's massive, massive spread and massive inventory space. And it's just. The reload speed is so slow, it's not worth it, keep it with the merchant, D tier. 
Okay, let's keep it nice and neat. Let's do the black tail next. Okay, the black tail. Ooh, the black tail. Ooh, the black tail. Yes, ooh, the black tail. Oh, it's such a good weapon. I love this handgun. S tier, easily. If the Matilda is your main squeeze, then the black tail is that X that used to do all that crazy stuff that the Matilda won't do, you know what I'm saying? And the description was such a bait for me. It says a well-balanced versatile weapon. I thought that it meant it was going to be mediocre at everything and good at nothing. It was actually quite the opposite in fact. This gun is good at everything. It lacks the laser sight upgrade but its spread is actually quite small. The recoil and handling is excellent. The fire rate is blazing fucking fast. It's super cracked for how much damage it does. The exclusive upgrade is worth every single penny. It is a beacon of light in this sea of mostly mediocre handguns. The ammo capacity is low, but the reload speed is so goddamn high. Look, when your back is against the wall, five Ganados are trying to give you free hugs. It's about to look like a Piper Perry video. Your shotgun is empty and you have no more flashbangs. You're gonna be real glad that you have the Blacktail at your side. She will not let you down, S tier. Like it's a weapon that you can actually spray and pray. It's so easy to use too. Like that's important, right? When like trying to find a good weapon, it's like it's easy to use. Okay, the Stingray. The Stingray, Um, it's, it's all right. It's good, it's good. I used it to complete my first playthrough. It's an A tier weapon. It's less powerful than the bolt action, but it has insane fire rate to make up for it. I'm not trying to rag on anybody, but it's a good weapon for people that miss a lot, like me. It's great for the regenerators for sure because it's a semi-automatic weapon and you don't have to come out of scoping in order to keep firing, which is nice and comfy. So it's a really really good A tier plus, A tier plus weapon. But man is it huge, it's huge, it takes up so much space. Next up we got the CQBR Assault Rifle. And eh, I, I don't know how I felt, I don't know how I feel about this weapon. It, it's good but it doesn't have a realistic use scenario. Now don't, don't get me wrong, the weapon is the highest DPS weapon in this game if you have infinite ammo cheats on. I, it really is the highest DPS weapon, outclassing any magnum if you just want to hold the trigger. It will melt bosses if you just point it at their weak point. Still, I need to cut this date short. It's not oh my god. <laughs> <Use this. laughs> it's faster than a magnum. The problem with this gun is that it consumes rifle rounds, but the value you get out of each rifle round is less than what you would get out of something like the Stingray or the Bolt Action, because each round does less damage. And rifle ammo isn't exactly abundant in this game. It's not exactly rare, but you won't be swimming in it, you know what I'm saying? Your rifle ammo is much better used for sniping key targets and bursting down bosses. It's a solid A tier just for its damage, but realistically, it's a meme tier weapon, because you probably will never use it on a new game playthrough. Speaking of bursting down bosses, we got magnums, magnums, th magnums, they're all good, they're all good. They are used in very specific situations like bursting down bosses and mini bosses, with huge amounts of damage. The broken butterfly is the first magnum we get in chapter 8, and it boasts the highest maximum damage potential due to its exclusive upgrade. But its massive spread can be very detrimental due to how rare magnum ammo drops are in this game. That's a lot of value lost if you miss a single magnum shot. So I'm gonna give it a solid B. B plus. B plus. It's a great and stylish weapon, and I love old revolvers, but the Broken Butterfly is outclassed by the Killer 7. Now, the damage on the Killer 7 isn't as high as the Broken Butterfly, but it comes mounted with a laser sight and high fire rate. And since magnum ammo is so rare, I value accuracy and speed versus firepower when it comes to hitting weak spots on bosses or even like a fast moving boss like Krauser. Good luck hitting Krauser with a broken butterfly, Jesus Christ. The Killer 7 basically has no real weaknesses overall, so it's the king of magnums, truly, S tier. Next up is the Hand Cannon. The Hand Cannon is a special magnum you unlock when you beat professional difficulty without any bonus items, or you can get it if you beat all the stages of mercenary mode with an S rank. It's good, it's all right. It, it's a fun weapon because its exclusive upgrade is unlimited ammo, but that feels a bit like cheating, doesn't it, mate? It's a solid A tier weapon. It's great for your New Game Plus playthroughs where you want to let off a little steam, you know? Next up, we have the Chicago Typewriter, which gets a B. The unlimited ammo upgrade and reload animation is cute, but <laughs> it's still a submachine gun. It feels like a Matilda with shittier shop grouping, to be honest, and it's nothing to write home about. Fun for New Game Plus playthroughs. And of course, the last weapon here, uh, the rocket launcher. <laughs> okay, bye. 
I slapped her in the face and said, Gloria las plagas. She turned around and I said, Gloria las plagas. She said, why did you do that? I said, Gloria las plagas. I punched her in the dick and I said, Gloria las plagas.